Hello everybody, today we're doing a video on SLI, the how to SLI, uh, the hardware that you're going to need, what you're going to have to do to install it into your computer, and what you're going to have to do on the computer side to enable SLI. Now a lot of people believe that to SLI you simply slap another graphics card in there and you're good to go, and quite frankly, it is pretty easy to do, but you are going to have to make sure that you have the right hardware ahead of time so you don't have to make some mistakes down the road and that could be pretty costly for you. Alright, so first we're going to talk about the actual video cards that you're going to use to SLI. Uh, I'm going to be using the GTX 670 here by NVIDIA. Uh, you can SLI most mid to high end graphics cards. Again, these are only the NVIDIA uh, graphics cards that we're going to be discussing. So to SLI graphics cards, what you're going to need to know is that they have to be the same number. In this case, GTX 670. You, you can SLI 680s together. You can uh, 660 Ti's, for example, or the 700 series, or the new or the future to come 800 series. They have to be the same number. Uh, so in this case, two 670s. They do not have to be from the same make though. In this case, I am SLI both the exact same graphics card, both from EVGA, but you can SLI one from ASUS, one from EVGA, maybe another one from MSI. It doesn't matter the brand as long as it is the same number, in this case, 670. In other cases, you're going to have cards that have different types of VRAM. In this case, both of my cards are 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Now you can SLI cards, for example, if you cannot find a 4GB version of your card, if you already had one, you can SLI a 4GB and a 2GB version, however it will only use the amount of RAM from the lower end graphics card. So you won't be able to take advantage of the 4GB from a card. So you can SLI graphics cards that's one to two gigabyte and one to four gigabyte version. However, it will only take advantage of the two gigabyte card. It will not use the full four gigabytes from your other card. So real quickly, just to run it back down, they have to be the same number. They can be multiple different brands, that doesn't matter. RAM is preferable that they're the same, however it's not a requirement, it will just use the one with the lower amount of VRAM. Alright, the next step in your hardware is going to be your motherboard. In this case, you're going to need a motherboard that supports SLI. In most cases, your box will say right on there, NVIDIA SLI ready. Uh, but if you don't have the box or you haven't been looking at the box uh, in store, for example, if you're trying to look online, you can look. Uh, the seller's uh, information it should say SLI ready somewhere in the description for the motherboard. Or if you just look at the comments, certainly people will mention something like that. Or worst comes to worst, just Google, will this motherboard SLI? It's pretty simple to do. Uh, in this case, both of the graphics cards are going to use the PCI x16 slots. Uh, both can take advantage of the 3.0. So this motherboard does have uh, two PCI uh, 3.0 x16 slots for me to use. Uh, 3.0, that's simply the higher throughput, essentially the equivalent of USB 3.0 for the PCI slots. Just higher throughput, however it's not a requirement. Now for this video, I am swapping out my old motherboard, which was the ASRock Pro 3 motherboard and I am stepping up to the ASRock Extreme 4 motherboard. It's a very, very nice motherboard. It has a lot of different features. If you are interested in the ASRock Z77 Extreme 4 motherboard, you can click this annotation down here. Then it'll take you to the unboxing and review video. Now the final requirement for SLI, we've covered the graphics cards and the motherboard. You're also going to need to make sure you have a power supply that can support SLI. In most cases, that means just having a high enough wattage. Uh, you can find different wattage calculators online. I'll link to one in the video description below if you're trying to find one. So while having the wattage is important, you also have to make sure you have the correct power connectors. Most of the time, the higher wattage uh, power supplies will already come with these power connectors. Uh, in the case for the 670 here, it requires two of the six pin power connectors and my power supply does have two different strands of the six pin power connectors. So my power supply will support SLI and again just make sure yours does. Something you can very easily do is make sure you have the correct power connectors. Just look on the seller's website. And the final piece of hardware you're going to need is an SLI bridge show you right there. SLI bridges come with your motherboard. They do not come with your graphics card unit. Uh, you do need this SLI bridge enabled to connect to the two graphics cards together. Again, that comes with basically every motherboard that does support SLI. If for some reason you broke it or you lost it because you didn't know what it was or you just threw it away because again you didn't know what it was, 
You can find them online, you can find them on Newegg, I believe they do sell SLI bridges online. Okay, so that pretty much covers the hardware side of things. Now we're going to go through the installation process. For me it's a little bit more tedious because I have to take out my old motherboard and reinstall my new one because my old motherboard does not support SLI. So we're going to have to go through that right now, but we're going to kind of jump forward just into the actual connecting of the graphics card. Alright, so as you can see, uh, here we have the two 16 slots, this one right here and this one down here. These are what we're using to put in the graphics cards. You can see I've cleared away uh, these two uh, panels here and these two panels down here. Those are where the graphics cards are going to sit and uh, put up. They take two spots in the back, so you need to free up these two. Usually you can just pry them out. There's usually Each case has their own way of removing uh, these two pieces of the back panel. And you're going to want to make sure you have uh, the one that's equal to the top or uh, the PCI slot and then the one below it that sits on the top one and then goes into the one below it. You can see here's my first GTS 670. This is my existing one. Most uh, uh, motherboards have like a sliding lock. Make sure it's in the open position as you slide your graphics card in there. You want to match it up with the PCI slot and evenly push down, make sure it's uh, evenly in there, and then you're gonna lock the uh, motherboard lock. Okay, graphics card one is securely in there now. All right, so now you're gonna want to start thinking about cable management wise, how you're gonna start uh, plugging these in here. Uh, I have both the power connectors on the back side of the case right now, just because I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this yet. I'm probably gonna slide them in uh, from one of these cracks. I'm gonna grab Beautiful. Alright, so same deal. Make sure uh, the lock on the motherboard is in the unlocked position. Again, nice and even. Slowly lower it in there. And then of course, so enter it nice and evenly. So the new graphics card is now securely in there. Then you're just going to want to screw in your graphics card. Now remember this piece I mentioned earlier that comes with your motherboards, your SLI bridge. We're going to need to connect the two graphics cards. Generally your graphics cards will be protected by something over these SLI pieces. Simply going to take those off. And then you're simply going to want to drop it on. Like so, it does not matter which way it goes. Simply connect it like so. All right, so now we've SLI'd the graphics units here. Now just remember, we do still have to power our graphics card units. We have the, the 12 total pins here. It's the twin six pin power connectors. So now we're going to figure out how to do that. So we have our two six pin power connectors here that we have to plug into the graphics card. Some graphics cards are positioned a little bit better with their power connectors. The 670s are ugly the way they are. I'm not going to worry about it for now. It's a problem for another day. You're simply going to match up uh, the power connections on here with those on here. They can only go one way. Like so. Try and jam that down here the best we can. All right, so here we are. We have our 670s in SLI. Here we have the SLI bridge, which connects the two graphics cards. Again, you're going to need your power connectors to be connected to make sure the graphics cards are getting their adequate power. Again, both cards are plugged into the uh, 3.0 PCI x 16 slot, the PCIe Express slot. Um, on my old motherboard, again, this is what uh, that slot looks like. That's this one right here. It's a nice long one. And so uh, here we are, we're ready to fire it up and see what happens. All right, so we pretty much are set up again. We have the SLI bridge with the two 670s. Uh, they're all getting their power. So the two 670s are in there. If we open up real quick uh, EVGA Precision X, this is just a monitoring program. You can see currently there is only one 670. But so we have to enable SLI. So if you open up GeForce, uh, the NVIDIA control panel, you can either type it in there or it's usually in your system tray. You're going to click on up here configure SLI surround FX. 
SLI configuration, you're going to click on Maximize 3D Performance. You can see now SLI is enabled. You can see the two 670s are there. And you're going to click Apply. The changes will be applied. And we now have SLI enabled. So if we close out the NVIDIA control panel, you can now see in here, it is now NVIDIA SLI. So we now are hooked up in SLI. So there we go. And that is all you have to do uh, to maximize your performance with SLI. That's how you set up SLI. Uh, from the hardware aspect to uh, actually installing the graphics card in there and hooking up SLI to enabling it on your computer, which, as I mentioned, is actually quite simple to do. One thing that I will mention before we go is every time you update your video driver by NVIDIA, every time you update your video driver, you're going to have to go back into uh, the uh, NVIDIA control panel and re-enable SLI. For some reason, every single time you update your video driver, it will stop that. So what will happen is, you'll update your video driver. If you don't re-enable it, you'll be just having two graphics cards in your computer, but you won't actually be using them. And that's also why you have to enable it. Uh, if you didn't do it in the first place, you would have the 670s in there. They'd look cool, but SLI wouldn't be enabled and wouldn't actually be doing anything. So make sure to do that. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you're going to go on with SLI, send me a picture if you can. Send me a YouTube message or a Google Plus message, anything like that. I'd love to see your computer pictures. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, if you found it helpful, feel free to subscribe, share it, give it a like, all that wonderful stuff. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.